The signing of the PSA is a seller management function. It's not seller marketing. So that's a whole different function. And if I can do both, that's great. But if I can only do one and get somebody else to do the other, as long as it gets done, I don't care. I'd much rather get a deal done than have no deal done. And so if you've got sellers that, that aren't responding to you, you're not getting paid on those sellers. If you could bring uh, a Rebecca or a Jason or a Megan or a Suli on to help you get that deal closed, now you both make money. to be interactive um and uh, i will say if people if you know how to raise your hand uh on here um in fact let's practice that uh do you want to know how to oh you know what i can't see you if you raise your hands i don't think i can see it can someone raise their hand and let's see if i can see it just go to reactions where it has an emoji and it should um at the bottom of it it should have a, a giant tab that says raise hand yeah, I see it. And I see it. it shows six participants raise hands. It does not. Oh, OK. It shows me who raised your hands. OK, cool. Excellent. OK, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to. Um, we're going to talk about some some things that people could be doing, might be doing. And if you're doing that thing. Um, raise your hand now when, when people raise their hands, can other people see that they've raised their hands or is it just me that can see it? Anybody know? I think it's only you. Ah, okay. No, so, I no everybody can see everybody. when oh, somebody else. Yeah. Ah, okay, cool. So you can see who's raising their hands. Um, so uh, let's talk about, so this one's an easy one. Tired landlords in Tulsa. I know a lot of you, a lot of you got started doing that. Uh, I think the, the, the biggest contingent of people here are doing that. Uh, but if you're doing tired landlords, any kind of tired landlord uh, marketing in Tulsa, uh, raise your hand. Um, and take note of who is actively doing that. Sassy is doing that. Suli, Megan, Rebecca, um, uh, and uh, Jason should be have his hand raised. He may not be able to raise his hand, but I know he's doing it. Um, okay, cool. So just keep note of who's doing it. And as you get, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, if you get, if you get stuck, if you get frustrated. Uh, particularly with tired landlords, uh, I'm encouraging people to swap their trouble sellers. So if you get a, if you have a seller that's not connecting with you for for some reason, you try to reach them, they won't call you back. Paul Bengal may be one for you, Sula. Maybe you try a different voice. Maybe you try a feminine voice. Uh, maybe you reach out to um, um, some of the women that are that are actively looking at tired landlords and tell us and say, hey, look. I'm trying to reach this guy. Maybe you'll have better luck. If you can reach out to this guy and get this thing signed, we'll still get the deal done. We'll slice up the deal like we, like we talked about in the uh, in previous um, uh, calls. We could talk about it at a future call. But we, we slice the deal up so that more than one person can participate in a single deal. And each person does their piece and we all get paid. But there are some sellers out there that will only respond to a guy or we'll only respond to a woman, or we'll only respond to this person or that person, and we don't care what they need. If we're not it, let's find who whoever can be it so that we can get the deal done. It's not about our ego. It's not about us at all. It's about them and what they need. If they need to talk to a female, then let's find a female voice for them to talk to. If they need to talk to a guy, let's find a guy for them to talk to. So if you've got dead sellers, not dead, literally, but if you've got sellers that have, have are no longer responding to you uh, or who, you know, didn't respond to you a little bit, maybe, and then they, they've stopped, um, reach out to test that someone else may be able to, you know, revitalize that connection. And um, in my book, the person who identified the seller and, and started building a relationship is doing what I call the seller marketing function. Uh, and I won't go through the whole deal slicer um, uh, philosophy or approach, but the premise is that there are seven functions of a wholesale deal. And 
for each of those functions, there's a percentage of the deal that I associate with that with that function. And so when you do that function, you get that piece. So if I do the identify the seller that's that I'm trying to reach and I gather up all the information and I'm ready to try to make this deal happen, but I can't get them to talk to me and, and get a PSA signed, the signing of the PSA is a seller management function. It's not seller marketing. So that's a whole different function. And if I can do both, that's great. But if I can only do one and get somebody else to do the other, as long as it gets done, I don't care. I'd much rather get a deal done than have no deal done. And so if you've got sellers that that aren't responding to you, you're not getting paid on those sellers. If you could bring uh, a Rebecca or a Jason or a Megan or a Suli on to help you get that deal closed, now you both make money. And that's the way the way it should work. And could it be me? It could be me, but... I can only be a guy's voice. I mean, my, my falsetto is not so strong. So I, I think if, if you decide that the person that needs to talk to your seller is a woman, you need to find one of the women in the group and reach out to them and say, hey, look, here's the seller I'm working on. Can you reach out to them and see if you can have some, some get some traction? Here's all the data that you need. I've already had a conversation with them. I know here's, here's the, their situation. You can pretend that you don't know any of this stuff and just reach out to them and see if they respond to you. Sometimes people respond to one person, they won't respond to the other. It's just human nature. So uh, I would urge you to do that. And I don't have the bandwidth to try to micromanage your lead. You know who, you work, who you're working on. Um, and I'll leave it to you that if you're not getting any traction, you can't be any worse off than getting nothing. If you're getting no response back, then there's no harm in trying to get somebody else to help you make that connection. Uh, Pre-foreclosures in Tulsa... Um, we had one of these last year. I was working actually with, the, with my niece, uh, Alicia. Uh, we got pretty far, but unfortunately, the seller uh, had almost as many problems as this $1.2 million guy had. Um, and we couldn't, we decided at the, at the end of it, we couldn't help him. He was too far gone for us to help. Uh, he had managed to go like three years without paying his mortgage. And so by the time we got to him, he owed so much in arrearage that it just didn't make the deal make sense. But I know that pre-foreclosures in Georgia are a thing, and uh, while it doesn't make it as transparent as Georgia uh, or Vegas uh, or, or Nevada, I guess, uh, it is a thing. So other than me, is there anybody else that's working pre-foreclosures in Tulsa or, or that plans to work pre-foreclosures in Tulsa? If you are, uh, raise your hand. And if it's just me, that's fine. You don't have to do these things. I'm just trying to make sure that anybody who's doing it sees other people who are doing the same thing. Try to get this.